This is Twit. He's so Claris Dawn is back. Everything oh. worked fine. Um, we got some pushback on social media for people saying, hey, that wasn't a spacewalk. That was a stand-up EVA. That's not good <laughs> enough. And it's like, look, nobody's done an Ed White float 30 feet from the spacecraft since Ed White and Gemini 4. So yeah, they the wanted thing to. Is they were safe. They wanted to. Jared Isaacman wanted to. And uh, apparently, like he did say before they even got into space, that when they did a lot of the testing, they couldn't they couldn't get comfortable with it also this is like spacex's big tentpole private space flight customer i don't think they want him out there dangling at the end of a 30-foot tether uh or or even you know <laughs> floating free so well, and first but, test of that eva suit exactly exactly yeah. you know I, i'm not sure if everyone noticed but they have a tether that is also in umbilical and it slots into like a like a connector on the top of their right thigh on the front of the spacesuit so hmm. uh the, and and it's it's a really interesting kind of um uh, quick disconnect that they they came up with for this suit, but it's not like it's in a place where they could have like a lot of free range of motion, and the tether is not that long. It's not long enough to to go all the way out uh, because they wanted to pre you know preserve the 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 integrity of everything on this first one. Maybe on the next one he's got two more flights on the docket. Maybe they're gonna they're gonna go longer. He'll get outside and do all sorts of fun stuff. We'll have to wait and see. But they, they came back. You're right. We had this story at space.com, but everyone uh, has been uh, uh, covering it around the world. In fact, um, the crew in the last three days has been making the circuit on CNN, on NBC, on ABC, uh, talking about the mission, uh, talking about with the, the people that they were like the, the, the pardon me, with the, the people that they were raising money for. Uh, and Say uh, Jude's. Yeah, St. Jude's, but also some other some other uh, nonprofits too, uh, to really kind of spread the love about everything uh, that 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 had happened, uh, and it was just a really, it's a really kind of nice uh, feeling that that mission seems to have gone off with with um, uh, mostly like out of hitch, and uh, and I guess the planning is underway for whatever the next flight is going to be, and uh, and I know we talked about it last week, I think at length, Rod, but. Um, I just there was a lot that happened. It was four people exposed to the vacuum of space. That was a bit of a record, I think. Uh, as first, well, was, yeah, it, it, it was the first for four, and the mm -hmm. first time the whole spacecraft had been evacuated above an airlock since Skylab One. Yeah, yeah, and and that's 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 an achievement. Say what you will about like SpaceX and stuff. There's some other stuff going on with SpaceX. I think we might talk about. Um, that's next. But, yeah. yeah, but uh, uh, but it, it was a, an amazing feat, and the landing. It appears to have gone off without a hitch. It was very smooth. The crew was smiling and like uh, uh, just like like full of joy uh, when they came back. And then they had a press conference later on in the week when they had their land legs back. So you know, kudos again to Jared Isaacman and his his private intrepid crew. I'm curious to see what he's going to do next with the next two flights that he that he has booked for the Polaris program. He has uh, three overall. This was the first, and we'll see how long we're gonna have to wait to see what he's gonna decide to do. All right, yeah. and and Jared does it with class. Uh, this the whole charity yeah. angle is something that's kind of kind of new. Other people have done it, but not to this extent. Um, it does right, also, it, but it, but just a, a short point. It does also. He, I think, one reason they do it is because he believes in the cause. He has since before he started mm -hmm. flying, but uh, uh, it does also give him a little bit of an answer when people say, you know, what if you just gave all the money right. to St. Jude's? Yeah. You know, so yeah. Um, let's just, talk about the SpaceX F8. Pa Pascal has Sorry, a, what? what? Yeah, I just had a quick comment on this because I, I completely agree with the fact that this mission deserves a lot of kudos and appreciation. I mean, the fact that, uh, you know, we might have done from an EV, strictly EVA standpoint, something that has been done before. The truth is, you know, SpaceX is a commercial company that is clearly developing uh, an EVA suit system for the longer term which will have right. additional complexities to it down the road and you have to look at this test as sort of a a step in the validation of different technologies and uh it, from that standpoint that's sort of what you start with if you're developing a real eva suit you want you want this kind of field testing so to speak uh before you you start integrating your your life support system to a backpack etc so uh anybody who would be inclined to poo-poo this as as something that was done before uh needs to realize that this is a this is a big milestone in, in a new independent development of a suit 
and it saved a whole bunch of taxpayer dollars because we we know how long it takes and how expensive these things are and i'm sure whatever eventually is used for lunar surface evas by nasa will be different but uh this was a big deal um so Tarek, tell us about the the spacex faa feud which is yeah. hanging things up yeah not this, good not good so in other spacex news it's been a really weird one uh, for uh, for SpaceX because uh, we found out earlier this uh, this week that the FAA ha is well they announced that they they may be levying some potential fines against SpaceX um, uh, uh, re regarding to a couple of different launches in the last year and um, and SpaceX and Elon Musk not not very happy about it you know this all kind of happened around midweek uh where the faa announced that they're gonna let that they they have plans to levy something like six hundred and thirty thousand dollars of fines uh with regards to two launches in 2023 uh and they the issues are that spacex had a plan approved for launch according to the faa then they put in modifications to those plans for the launch um of different degrees i don't think we have to get into it too much uh but we've got we've got details on space.com about it and uh, uh, but SpaceX launched anyway before the FAA had time to finish their evaluations of those changes, and it happened twice. It happened uh, during um, uh, the the launch of the, both the launches were from Florida, but one of them was uh, a, a satellite called PSN Satria uh, from Cape Canaveral, and the other uh, and uh, I think it also had Echo Star. Uh, I, I, 24 Jupiter 3 from KSC uh, and and SpaceX says hey no those changes were fine you know we we didn't need your approval for them these fines are lit litigious and totally unwarranted uh, uh, Elon Musk said that this week they're, they're gonna sue them uh, uh, the FAA for government overreach and overregulation uh, and then uh, I think a day or two later, they sent a really harsh letter, a scathing letter, I would say, uh, to one of the House subcommittees that oversees a lot of commercial space regulation, uh, really just pushing uh, on this. And it's just really, it's 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 kind of like mom and dad fighting in front of the kids kind of a thing. You know, we're all watching this happen in real time when we just talked about this amazing achievement with Polaris Dawn. And next week, before our next episode recording, SpaceX is going to launch uh, a crewed flight for for NASA Crew Nine. Uh, that's the rescue flight for uh, Sonny Williams and 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 Butch Woolmore up on the station. So, like they they do have an essential service to provide, and then they're also uh, complaining to the government about. Uh, kind of launching with, okay, about the rules breaking rules that the government says they need to follow to do those flights it's fairly confusing how that's going to shake out but it's just a really uh kind of fraught atmosphere right now at least from my perspective as like a lay person who doesn't get any of these contracts and regulations as um perhaps as meticulously as a, a, a media a space law expert would would would, would do well, I'm going to sue you to see that you understand the better. <laughs> I think there that's only go. fair. 